are now rocking with the best. Who's the boss? Your shoulders knocking out the competition. The kick ass podcast that make you want to listen. The place where boxing fans and fighters rejoice. Thumbs up for Richie. You're listening to the fighter's voice. Hey, this is Richard Ortiz, your host of the Fighter's Voice Kick-Ass Podcast. we got a great show for you this evening. This evening, we have with us in studio, not just himself, but his father as well. And we're talking about Richard Torres Jr., the silver medalist, super heavyweight Olympian, fresh off the plane. I wish I would have made it to the airport to greet him there. And we got Richard Torres Sr. We're talking about two badasses sitting in the studio with us here on the Fighter's Voice. We're going to ask them some questions. We're going to talk about some fights that are coming up this weekend and some fighters that are testing positive for COVID. Man, no one's exempt from this, this crazy virus that's going around. We're also going to ask them some friendly questions, and we want to find out what makes them tick, what makes them move forward, and what makes them really think to themselves like, wow, man, that, that's really happening now in, in this world that we live in. And, you know, the whole world at times it is a boxing match in his own, but the fighters, they get to hear the bell ring, and the life fighters, you know, we continue to just roll with the punches, man. And we're going to get in depth with them. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have some laughs, some joy. We're going to share some secrets. We're going to share maybe exactly what's going on and what the future holds for this future heavyweight champion of the world. Remember, I'm your host, Richard Ortiz. Enough said. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we have with us 2021 silver medal winner, fresh off the plane, the one and only Mr. Richard Torres Jr. and Sr. Welcome to the show, guys. How's it going? Great to be here as always. Thank you. When I roll off my tongue, dad is going, okay, it's still senior and then junior. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I got to ask you, man, I mean... Your dad uh, boxed. Your grandfather boxed. How was the energy as a child growing up knowing, okay, I want to box because my dad boxed. And then my grandpa also boxed. Talk about the, the pressure, but you adopted it very early at a young age. I just want to cut right in the beginning and then we're going to grow. What was that energy and, and that pressure? What was it like? You know, a lot of people told me that it was... A ton of pressure but honestly growing up I thought everybody did it I thought everybody would go and do their own sport after school I thought everybody was gonna go and train I thought everybody had a dad that box you know I thought okay I thought that was a normal thing to do and so uh, going into it I thought that I didn't really feel too much pressure because I just thought it was a normal it's just a normal part of life a exactly. normal part of growing up mm -hmm. and I mean I knew my dad was was a great boxer and I knew my grandpa boxed, and I knew that uh, there were shoes to be filled but I, I really thought that everyone had that that little journey too, and so to to find out later in life that you know there really was a lot of pressure, um, I'm kind of glad I didn't realize that at a young age. Dad, when you first had the conversation w with your father uh, about picking up uh, the gloves, putting the gloves on, and getting in the ring, was there any similarities to the first conversation you had with uh, young Junior here about entering the ring and putting the gloves on? You know, when when I first uh, started boxing, it wasn't a conversation, you know. Basically, I just started hanging around in the gym, and he was training a couple of older guys, and they wanted to hold their legs and, you know, go get the bag gloves for them and everything. He just kind of progressed into slowly. Then he looked at me one day and says, you want a box? Okay. So I got in the ring and started doing it. Uh, with my boy here, you know, it was just something that he was uh, basically born to do. You know, I, when he was in the womb with my wife uh, carrying him, I just told my wife, hey, he's got a box until he's 16. And it just progressed in, the, in that. He didn't really have a, uh, too much of a choice. You know, just kind of, like you said, it's just part of life. Hey, just get up and go run. Hey, just get up and go do this. It's just part of his life. And he knew, he thought that was normal for everybody. Hearing that, a, a lot of parents or a lot of um, day and age that we live in, they would say, well, it, it's his life. Let him do what he wants to do. I'm going to ask the tough questions, guys. But it was almost destiny. Yeah. Your, your dad... Uh, accepted the blessing, uh, claimed the blessing, proclaimed it over your life. And as they say, the rest is history. Was there at all any time you wanted just to pick up a football and maybe make a couple touchdowns or pick up that bat and hit a walk-off home run or tennis racket or swimming, any of the above? Yeah, I mean, uh, one, of the, one of the biggest things that my dad and I actually talked about uh, was the saying, it says, uh, freedom without, freedom without uh, 
rules, it makes you a slave to your desires. You know, so I, I really like my dad was gave me the freedom to try other sports, and I did. I was a when I was growing up, I played football, basketball, I ran track and field, but I had to go to boxing after that. And uh, I'm I'm really thankful that they put me in sports at a young age. I'm really thankful that I had those rules and regulations because I was able to um, I was able to try new things in that sport. I was able to to have my freedom while I was still doing something to pr to make myself a better person and. Uh, Boxing's given me so many like valuable tools inside and outside of the ring. You know, I, I feel like it's it's really humbled me in a way, and it's gave me confidence at the same time. You know, it's 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 an amazing sport, and when I go and I talk to people, I, I I'm an advocate to, for everybody to try it at least once. I agree. You know, and, and just to put it in, you know, I I allowed him to play the sports. I say I wanted him to play the sports. A couple of reasons: Bill's dexterity, hand-eye coordination, all those things. Uh, gross motor mo motor movement but you know if he wasn't good if he was it was a sh chore to get him to go to the gym every day he was crying he was yeah i'd reevaluate but he just took to it like a duck to water man he just continued to improve so because i wanted him to play uh, uh other sports and box he had to do the double time you know i wanted him not to lose the the skill of boxing that he he grown up doing so yeah i he did double i didn't push him as hard during the training sessions he came to the gym, hey, we're gonna hit the back two, three rounds, shadow box a little bit, let's go home. You know, and, and we took, you know, I, I gauged him and stuff. Like once again, but you know, I don't wanna look like I was a slave master and I just kind of pushed him. But yeah, you know, I kept him directed. Yeah, you know, like he says, you know, uh, it, you know, you, you don't wanna to go to your own desire. I kept him in boundaries and said, this is our goal. And he continued to achieve those benchmarks to reach that goal and I kept pushing him. When you're born and you have that DNA inside you, and you got that pedigree, it that's a no-brainer. It, it's like an, a, a, a race car with a huge engine. Okay, we're gonna race, okay? Because you have a souped up engine from, from day one. So we're gonna put you on the track and see what, what you can do. I, I asked those questions, Richard, to get those answers, mm -hmm. to, to pull it out and to clarify. I know exactly what's going on. I want the viewers, the fans, and the followers to know exactly that your dad not only made the correct decision, continues to make the best decision when it comes to your future and, and your happiness. Dad, was it everything you thought it would be when the national anthem was being played and, and, and they're announcing um, U.S. representing USA Richard Torres Jr. The first time that you heard that as an Olympian, what, what was going through your uh, thought process? I know you were nervous, but when it was when was it so real? When you're going, like, my gosh, my son is getting on that plane representing Team USA. Well, it comes in waves, you know. Kind of like I, I'm, I'm sitting there, but I, you know, I grew up. What I figured is kind of poor and everything, so you don't want to get too happy with anything. You're not yes. you're not looking for Christmas yes. all the time because Christmas comes and ah, that's not the Christmas I wanted yes. and everything. So I'm always got everything engaged in in, in, in in control. Him getting like on the the plane, like you know, it's just that satisfaction of reaching a goal. Um, and you know, when he heard his name and stuff, you know, I gotta admit, yeah, you know, tearing up a little bit. There's you know, just that satisfaction, that deep pride that happens with that. But you know, it's just extreme satisfaction to know that that all the work that he put in all the things I told him to do it came to fruition I tell people all the time man I sure glad it worked out because I rode him like a horse you know how would I have to answer to him and one day say sorry man we wasted a lot of years and you didn't get it but you know he was successful and he continues to be successful now, we, we've had this discussion before he was actually uh, officially uh, an Olympian and um you called it. You said, hey, we're, there, there is no plan B. We're going all out. I mean, balls out, everything. There's no safety net. I mean, you always looked out and continue to look out for his best interests. But I remember the day that it was official, man. I mean, you get to see, what you don't get to see, Richard, is me um, like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> Especially, and, and, I'll, and I'll circle back to where I was. When I'm watching the, the big fight, and I'm probably bothering your dad. Okay, well, what's the link again? Because mine keeps shutting down. And I want to make sure because they're asking, people are asking me and I want to send them a link. I don't want them, right. everybody in my house at 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> but when I'm watching that fight, other people started gathering. I actually walked out of a party to watch it. And I'm going, hey, hey, I, I want to hear this. Because they kept like, you know, go back in the party, man. And they're, oh, that's that kid. That's that kid. And when you bump into people and they said, hey, we're going to watch a fight. I go, what fight? Because I wanted to pick their brain. Oh, that Olympian kid. The, the one from my neighborhood. And, and, and when you see that and hear that, I mean, it's just, 
I get goosebumps, and I was getting excited during that time, and I'm yelling at the ref during that time, and, and so when you hear your dad say that, he's calm and collective, but it don't just rub off on your dad. It rubs off on all of us, and, and, and my next question was this, Richard. Entering that ring, you're not only representing Richard Torres, the family, but the whole United States of America on your freaking shoulders, on your back, on your shorts, on your shoes, on your gloves, in your mouthpiece. When did you get to say, okay, I know this already. I'm going to take care of business in the ring. How did you separate the two? Or did you bring any of that to the ring and did it work for you? So that first fight, I was fighting against Algeria. And uh, leading up to it, there was um, the, all my all my friends had fought. All, all the team had already fought. All the guys had fought and won. And I had to wait at least a week. I had to wait like almost like five days to be able to fight again. To be able to fight for my first time. And I was I was going through it. I was nervous. I was watching my <laughs> opponent. I was I was looking at all the other stuff. I was like, Am I ready? Am I doing everything right? And then finally, when I was able to step in that ring, everything went away. All the 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 nerves. All the the I can't do. I don't know if I'm gonna do this. Just went away. And it was just like I just want to win. It, it it I lost every part of being Olympian. I lost every part of uh, who I was like. I lost all that and just focused on winning, you know, and just focused that I wanted to be the guy with the hand raised at the end of it. And I think that did that did a lot of help for me, you know, is just that competitiveness. You know, at the end of the day, I'm I'm a competitor and I wanted to win, you know, and afterwards I realized, you know, this is something that's really good, not just for me, but for my community, for my for my country. But if, if I'm being honest, when I was in that ring, I just wanted to win. Everything was absorbed and you were just focused on, on the reason why you were there. Mm-hmm. Dad, I know you wanted to make the trip. I know you wanted to be there. We had this discussion before. You said, hey, my, everything's paid for. Everything's ready to go. If they were to allow me, boom, we're catching the plane and we're there. How tough was it, the transition from watching it on TV like the rest of us as opposed to always being there? And this question is also for you too, Richard. Also hearing that voice when your dad is present or has the opportunity to go. Uh, first with, with you, Dad. No, it, it, was, it was painful, man. It was... You know, all these years and stuff, when we go through this this journey together and me not being there, you know, it almost feels like like I'm letting him down. Okay, you know, he's getting hit. Like, oh man, if I was there, I tell him that you know, I'm I mean, I want the TV. Do this, do this, do this, and stuff. It was, it was terrible. You know, I had it planned where I was in, had a friend of a friend who had a friend who had an apartment in Tokyo, and I can get into Tokyo. I had it all figured out and stuff. And then they said we're not letting, letting any ven any any spectators in the venue. What am I gonna go for? You know, I, so I, all those were scrapped, and I went, came back, and everything. But you know, I, I feel the punches. I I know when he's hurt. I know when he moves. I know when he's great. I know everything about him and stuff. Cause I, you know, we were almost like one. But it was it was a terrible feeling to just feel like I'm not there in order to be in this corner, which I've been with for many times. And part of the problem is when you got on a national team traveling through all these countries. Yeah, I'm a working stiff. I gotta have a job. Yeah. It's hard to take off a month, a month and a half, two months at a time, and come back and expect the job. So you know, he, I got a little used to it, but you know, not, uh, not too comfortable with it. Richard, being accustomed to having your father there, when did you, when did you realize, okay, he's not going to be able to show up? I know you're waiting for a miracle. Hey, maybe, maybe he'll be able to make it for this fighter, or I'm going to look in there. He's going to surprise me. I know a lot of things are going through your mind. You know, just reality checks. When did you realize, okay? He's watching me. I got to focus on this task at hand. I feel like I realized that quite a long time before the fights actually started. And so what I did to prepare for that is I had my dad prepare me. So I had my dad come out to Colorado, and he was the one that was in my corner. And uh, he worked really well with Coach Billy, the, the head coach. And, he, and Coach Billy let him be in my corner, and uh, I trained with him every day. And then when I went to uh, Japan in Miyazaki, I had a two-week training camp there. I talked to my dad every day. I talked to my dad every night. I uh, called him even when I was sparring a couple of times and had my teammates yell things uh, that he was saying. And so I, I, I really just try to focus on the preparation of having him get me ready for when I'm in the ring. And I know when we are in the ring, it's a little different because he does have, he does see things that I don't see and he's he knows exactly how to talk to me. But uh, we prepared enough to where I knew that he was with me in the ring, you know, and I knew that I was going to do what he wanted me to do. And every time before I was in the fight, uh, I called him three times before the fight. I called him in the morning, I called him on the way to the bus, and I called him 
after I did my mitts and was right about to get in the ring. And we just go over the game plan, we prepare, and uh, we make sure that my game plan was the same as my dad's game plan, which was the same as Coach Billy's game plan. And uh, it worked out, you know, it worked out pretty well. And uh, yeah, so just prepared. So there's two things though. He'd call me, and the first time he called me for his first fight, he's got his, you know, he's all greased up and everything, and he's got his gloves on, and so the coaches called me, and they pushed the button, and put the phone to his uh, ear. I had my gloves on and everything, yeah. So, and I say, hey, let's go. This is what we're going to do. This is what you got to coach say in the corner and everything. And back to me coaching him all the time, <laughs> I got scolded by, by USA Boxing and Coach Billy because one time he's in the ring, and, and I knew that, you know, what the rules are and everything, and he's in the ring, and his buddy, one of the other teammates, has the phone. He's showing me the sparring match, and I get carried away. Tell him to do this. Tell him to tell him to do this. Do it. Tell him, tell him, tell him to do this. And then finally, you know, he's yelling, he's yelling and stuff. And the round ended. And I said, hey, tell him he's got to move this way. He's got to do this way. He goes, what? What? The kid gets up top of the rope, up top of the ring, and sticks the phone in my son's <laughs> face in the corner with the two coaches right there. Oh, wow. And they're like, hey, hey, hey. And then the coach would be like, hey, Rich, hey, Rich you can't do that. Hey, Rich. And he's getting tired. Hey, I was not no I'm sorry and stuff. All that stuff, but we, you know, it was just he knows the relationship we have. You know, that was pretty crafty, though. Yeah, yeah. I like that. So it definitely is. I got scolded by by Coach Billy and stuff. Just you know, that that lines. was a, that was a trick from uh, Oh Teddy Atlas. Yeah. That's Oh Teddy Atlas <laughs> trick right there. Michael Moore, uh, he, he's fighting Evander Holyfield, and and Teddy Atlas grabs his phone. Your your kid's on the line right now. He's crying because his dad doesn't want to be champion, and he's putting it up to him, and he's just you know basically just firing him up and hypnotizing him and just. Okay, man, you know, uh -huh. I mean, I was like, wow. So, hey, there you go, man. See, I would have never known, but only on the fighter's voice, man, where, where you get the real voices and you get the real truth. I want to ask you, Richard, what was it like being the big dog on the team? I, I mean, you, you're just, you know, we talk about responsibility, you know, uh, on your shoulders in, in the super heavyweight division, but also your teammates, man. A lot of them looked up to you. A lot of them, you, you directed to them. And I believe uh, uh, a senior iron sharpens iron. No, definitely, and I, I I believe wholeheartedly that on the team, you know, everyone's like, everyone could have meddled, you know, and it was just the the division and the and the bracketing and how how the seeds were and how the drawing went, it just kind of messed with some people. But uh, I mean, it was it was an it was an amazing thing to be around that type of atmosphere and those type of people because everyone had the same mindset and everyone had the same drive and focus and goal, and so like to be a part of someone like of a, of a group of people that all wanted that gold medal. And we all had that mindset and drive. It was, it was an amazing thing to be a part of. You know, we all trained as hard as we could train. We all pushed each other to the limit. And uh, I have nothing but greatness to say about the rest of the team. I know, I know that everyone on that team is going to be someone one day. You know, I got a lot more <laughs> questions. But if I, if I do that, uh, Senior, I'm going to step on some of this, this questionnaire that has been coming in. So I'm going to give you uh, some few questions, too. And, and, and Dad, after Richard... Uh, junior answers some if you want to put what you're feeling a little icing on the cake so to speak on top please feel free and that's why you're mic'd up that's why you're here today okay this first question is for uh, this is from uh, bernardo osuna one of the best broadcasters in the world uh, not only in english but also uh in spanish a great recognized uh, bilingual uh interviewee so to speak for espn uh, plenty of awards uh, the, the list goes on your father knows exactly who i'm talking about he says, um, at what weight class level does he see himself being successful in the pros game? Because the current heavyweight crop of champions in the same size as your your uh, last opponent, who who was his um, biggest obstacles in the amateur ranks? You know, I think that... I'm a super heavyweight. I think I'm a heavyweight in the pro division as well. You know, uh, I mean, I know there's a there's a big size difference. I know there's a size gap, but I feel like I, even though the top guys right now are, are a lot taller, mm -hmm. I feel like I've made my mark in the heavyweight division in that super heavyweight division. You know, I am a silver medalist. You know, I have fought guys that are a lot taller than me and beat them before. I mean, this guy that the guy that I lost to was actually really good. Jalabov, he was he's a good fighter. You know, he's a really good mm -hmm. guy. But in that same sense, so am I. I mean, I got there. I I knocked out the silver medalist. You know, I beat the Cuban. Uh, no one's beat the Cuban. Uh, heavy. No one's beat the Cuban since I think 2000 or 2004 from the United States. So I really do like I've 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 showcased my skills and abilities, 
and uh, I'm I'm here in the heavyweight division, and I'm here to make some noise. Dad, any comments on that? You know what? It, it's he, he said it perfectly. You know, why fix something not broke? You know, he's competing at the top levels. He's worldwide. He's taking out guys that are bigger than him. You know, it's just strategy and that makes it work. I I know that the size and the weight. Your height. I I'm about. I'm um, six two, about six two. Your weight? I'm two twenty five. Okay. Michael Moore, Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield. I can keep going on. Um, the list goes on. Uh, my taking that that's a great uh, educated uh, question. But you've been fighting guys since the amateurs that were that were uh, you gave up a size difference, especially at these um, big tournaments and these world tournaments. Um, but I do, I do like the answer coming from you because a lot of people are asking me, hey, Richard, ask him, is he going to go to cruiserweight? Is he gonna, I mean, even people with light, I go, bro, he'll eat a light heavyweight for, for <laughs> dinner, okay? I mean, just he's a heavyweight. That's why, team, that's why he's representing Team USA a, as a heavyweight. But no, Bernardo, uh, that's a great question, and I love that question coming from Bernardo. This next question is coming from Showtime Sean Porter, former two-time welterweight champion of the world. He said, Ask him to give his honest insight into what was going through your mind prior to this rematch. A lot of people assume there was plenty of fear in place because of their previous fight, but his performance was quite unique. I want to know, did he fight through the fear, which would be uh, incredibly impressive, or was he a straight mentally and emotionally ready to give the highest performance what suggests which what would he also be impressed with with your own performance by by entering the ring by by saying okay i'm going back in there and i remember what happened the first time as if to say what was going through your mindset going into that the, this the, the final fight you know if i'm being a hundred percent honest i wasn't too nervous when uh i beat the kazakhstan guy and i was i was i, I was like all right let me watch some film as soon as I watched film of of Jalal of, of Uzbekistan, I got terrified. I got terrified. I was I was thinking, man, this, that looks like the punch that knocked me out. Man, I got knocked out. Do I want? Man, I don't want to get knocked out in the Olympics. Oh, what am I gonna do? And what time is it? It's and it's, it'd be like it'd be like three three p.m. over over uh over in in Japan. So it'd be like. One in the morning over in, in California, so I don't want to call my dad right now. What am I going to do? Oh, man. And I call my dad finally, and I, he wake, I wake him up at, like, 2 in the morning. And I'm like, Pops, like, I got to talk to you. And he goes, what's up? I was like, man. And everyone everyone around me was saying how brave I was and how courageous I was for fighting all these big guys. And I'm like, Pops, everyone's saying how brave and courageous I am. I'm, I'm terrified, man. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I'm terrified right now. And my dad goes, he goes, you know, oh, what did you say? <laughs> yeah, everybody gets scared in the ring and stuff, but you need to control it. Just like uh, uh, Custy and Model told Tyson, you know, it's a fire that, that you got to control it, consume you or, or, or warm you. Uh, you know, you just got to do it. Yeah, just do it. Mm -hmm. And then once you said that, I, it, would, it would come in waves in. You know, it, I'd be completely calm and I, I'd, I'd pray, you know, I'd pray over it and I'd wear this polo shirt every time I, I'd go into the ring because uh, the bears on the polo shirt remind me of my grandpa's and so yeah. i think to myself like man i got i got god and my grandpa's with me and so it'd calm me down and then and then the, the nerves would start coming back it creep back and i'd get terrified again and this would happen all the way up to the fight and as soon as i got in the fight and as soon as i well I, as soon as i got to the, the warm-up area i was like i'm meant to be here man like I'm, I'm supposed to be here there's something about today that i'm i'm supposed to be here regardless of the outcome i'm in this moment, I'm I'm right where I need to be, and I was like, let's do this, you know. So I went in the ring, knowing that the guy had a great punch, knowing that I had gotten knocked out. But I went in the ring, confident in myself as well. I went in the ring knowing that I had a good punch, and I and I I was a guy I was a guy to be feared too, and you know I, I gave him my all, and I, I I do feel like I fought without fear, just because I knew that I, no matter what happened, I was gonna give my all. And so that's what I did. My hand wasn't raised, but I, I, I do take a, some pride in that. I, I can't say like forever I gave it my best shot. 
you and, and, and I, okay he also adds this he goes and i say this for for after your answer tell him i'm proud of the captain because he, he was commentating the fights and uh he would actually we were back and forth hey tor is about to walk in right now because i wanted to save my free time that i had because when, when i wasn't home right because you only get so much of the of the free time before because what I, I i would get it and then oh one round then it then it was gone so i had to get another link and so forth but he said okay he's coming in the ring right now he was i gotta go and he would tell me hey i was sleeping he goes your boy's gonna be fighting pretty soon and uh he grew accustomed and became a fan during the whole time he was commentating um rich and i'm not saying it just to say it you going in the ring that was already the victory and you did not fight uh he landed the same punch yeah. you ate it yeah you you ate it we and, took and what, it a little bit better. We slipped it, a little bit more. Yeah, and and I do love the game. I want to ask since we're talking about this, where did the game plan come down from from the, the crouching low un, un, underneath where he had a punch down and he had to actually he was actually he was actually running away because he tasted the power early and he wanted no part of that and that's why he was holding. There was no warning for the holding and we'll talk about all that other stuff. But where did the game plan come from, the, the crouching low? The game plan was move my head. You know, oh, okay. that, the game plan was, you know, get in there, land that jab to the body, you know, uh, try to work from body up and then move that head. That was the biggest thing. He goes, he's going to try to land that left hand. And he goes, if he lands the left hand, it's going to hurt. So you're going to get out there, just keep moving that head. After you punch, move that head, get off on an angle and try to punch again. You know, so it was, it was just try to just stay pressed. And, uh, and no matter what you do, just keep that head moving. Uh, that that um, fight answered a lot of questions. People who don't know boxing, they still get the right to to comment and, and some of the, the the stuff. Some people have said, okay, if he gets hit, or he probably don't have no chin, or he probably don't have no wrist. That answered all that because you took that same punch and you ate it. You took a couple of those mm -hmm. and you ate it. Went right through it. Didn't even budge it. Your legs didn't actually. There. Some. I'm gonna be honest with you. Some were cleaner, yeah. and and you just walked right through it. How did you feel once he started holding on, knowing that he was hurt, that you, that you caught him? So I know I caught him with that left hand, and I caught him, and I was like, oh, let's, let's do this. And in a way, it might have been uh, detrimental, honestly, because, because I, I started looking for that left hand a little more, yeah. but he started looking for that left hand also. He started, he felt the power, and I don't know if he, like you said, he started holding a little more, and he went back to a different game plan than what he originally had. I think he went out there, and he thought we were going to be able to box. And as soon as I hit him with that shot, he hadn't been hit like that in a while, and so he, no, he, he changed his game plan up. And I mean, I commend him for that because I mean that game plan started working. It was an amateur game plan that had the that had the the holding, the leaning on it, and uh, and try to hit me when I can. And I mean, in that in that division, I mean, in amateur boxing, that that will work. And uh, I mean, I'm not saying anything against the guy. He, I I do think I lost that fight, but it was it was just it was he had a, he had a good strategy at the end of the day. I'm I'm gonna ask the question, but I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask a dad the question. Dad, we got a professional fighting an amateur. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on that? You know what? I uh... sign sealed, experienced professional. Yeah, uh, you know what? My boy, we want to go out there, and he's always stated, "I want to be the best in the world." Okay. okay? I don't want to be the best amateur. I want to be the best in the world. So, yeah, he's a little different experience, a little more experience. So, you know, my complaint would be a little more with the refing and, and judging, and not the judging, with the refing, the holding, and, and things that were allowed to happen because you know, it's more benefit. It's beneficial to them. Uh, but if you want to have professionals in the Olympics, let's call it something else. Yeah, it's not the Olympics, not the amateur great mm -hmm. amateurs. It's something else now. Okay. They're changing it. They're making a different animal. So, I know my boy is the Olympic champion for for what it's meant to be, amateurs. You know, because he won the the semis and beat a pro, and he won the and he lost in the finals to a pro. So it's not an amateur thing anymore. And numbers and facts don't lie. Um, Thorpe was stripped of all his medals because mm -hmm. they found out he did something that considered him a professional, or he took a dollar. I don't know sure yeah. what exactly the facts were. But now today we embrace it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's, it's a disadvantage, you know. Um, you know, it's just like steroids or, or, or yeah. you know, and horn heads. You know, if you're gonna allow it, allow it. If you're yeah. not, nobody gets to do it. You know, I think it's just a, a two-sided street in that one. 
I, 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 I agree with you. I have my personal thoughts about that, but, but we're going to move on and have junior answer because junior's slate is clean. But I, I will say this, if we're going to give a standing eight count to alarm the, the whole uh, judges, okay, mm -hmm. let, let make it a 10, eight. We could have easily gave a standing eight count in the first round. Yep. We could have actually gave a hard warning for holding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let, let's give you a hard warning. But we're just going to go right off and take a point away. There was no warning. There was no, I mean, yeah. That's my take on that. That's just, he was down two rounds before he entered the ring. That's my take. And I'm probably going to get a bunch of emails and a bunch of richer that, that it is what it is, but Hey, we're not blind. And you know, th the similar things happened to Evander Holyfield at the bow. Um, Roy Jones, um, Mayweather. Yep. It, we're not exempt from it happening to anybody. So being that said, we're going to move on. And I said it, I wanted to, to get it out of the way, but I wanted to share that conversation with your father. Um, the last thing we need is your professional career to go forward. And he still hasn't let this go. I said the words that needed to be said. Okay. Now here's one for you. Okay. We're going to make this, you make you smile. This is coming from Mikey Garcia four division world champion. Came up short against Errol Spence, uh, going for a fifth world title. Is now going to uh, go back to, uh, or now go to 140s and uh, seek, seek a bout. He said, tell him this. Come visit us at Robert Garcia's Boxing Academy. Our doors are always open. When he's ready to turn pro, this is now for, for dad and son, we'll take him and make him into a champion that he already is. Give us the opportunity. Our doors are open. Can't wait to see him come through or just come by for a workout. That's awesome. <laughs> that is uh, one heck of a gym there. Um, your dad already uh, knows that. Hearing an imitation like that, how does that make you feel? And this is um, coming from a four division world champion. I mean, I, th I think it's amazing. You know, I mean, it, the man speaks for himself. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to explain who he is anymore. Yeah. You know, he's, he's that guy. And, uh, be able to, to have the offer from from someone like that is is, is really incredible um yeah and you know the, the the thing i'll tell him is like i want me and my dad to go there you know me and my dad that's to be able to... when he said at the very end for both exactly yeah so i mean it's a smart man mike is a smart uh, yeah. man <laughs> i mean and i know it's like it's me and my dad and i know we both go and we both know that we don't know everything but we go to learn and uh to be able to to learn from some of the best is always amazing well, let me fix that, and then I'm gonna let Dad answer. We both, all three of us are going. I'm going there too. Go. Yeah, Shoot, I, go. I'm going there. I'm going there. Dad, hearing that, you 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 knew this day would come. You know, um, you've even had this these these uh, um, compliments, these imitations before he went aboard on the plane. So, what what's your what's your take on on on, on Mikey's uh, comment? You know, he, he's, he's success. You know what I mean? He's done it. He's there. Yes. You know what I mean? He wants more, but he's there. You know, he's, he's somebody, like the boy says, you don't have to explain who he is. He's, he's Mike Garcia. You know, uh, when we get the phone calls, the, the you know, offers and things like that, it's validation. You know what I mean? Yes. And anybody knows uh, about boxing, how you start and how you train and stuff, it's a dungeon. You know, you, you're in the dungeon by yourself most of the times. You're training and stuff. The only one that's pushing you is you. You know, uh, it's pretty hard for you to to uh, uh, slack off. You know, uh, you know, like other sports and stuff. But it's hard for you also to push yourself as hard as you can because it's just you. You know, and him saying that it's appreciated and with validation that hey, we were doing something good. You know, I'm smiling, Richard, because. Other people want a, a meeting. They, they'll send emails, or, uh, a, a formal letter. So Mikey just wins right through. He goes, hey, no, I'm going to cut right through the chase, man. I want him over here. Mm -hmm. You know, he just, on, on the show even, instead of saying, hey, um, what's his email address? I'm going to send him an invitation. I'm, uh, I'd like to meet with you. You know, that's usually the way it does. But, right. but Mikey, Mikey's a very smart man. I will say this about Mikey. Mikey cut the middleman out. Mikey sits on the negotiation tables. Mikey knows math and he knows numbers. Mikey presents the numbers. He, he, he manages himself. So Mikey knows what he's talking about. I'll ask Robert, hey, when's Mikey? Next? He goes, I don't even know when Mikey's coming. <laughs> Mikey's Mikey. You know, and um, the reality of it is, is when he took the Spence fight. Right. He said, I'm going to take this fight. But see, Mikey knew something we all didn't know. Not only did he take the fight 
um, to win the fight, but that was the last big fight before COVID hit. When everybody's tripping, Mikey was just counting. <laughs> He's a businessman, and he gave it his all. So shout out to Mikey, man. Mikey's a good dude. Okay, now this is coming from Regis Pro Grace, former uh, world champion in Ranked number one in the 140 pound division, uh, lost a close uh, unification fight, uh, as you know, to Josh Taylor. Josh Taylor um, uh, was able to be victorious over Jose Ramirez, which was a spectacular fight. I, I was sitting and covering that fight. Do you have any questions for him? He goes, no, man, I, if so, I'd be here all day. Cause he will, he'll, he'll actually, I'll have to put the phone here. And he keeps it 100, Regis keeps it 100%. He said, tell him, I said, congratulations on that silver medal. And I can't wait to see him turn pro. So from Regis Pro Grace. He's a big fan of yours, man. This next one is from Robert Garcia himself um, at Robert Garcia's Boxing Academy. Tell him I said congratulations. Tell him I'm very proud of him, and I hope to work with him and see him very soon. Tell Dad I love the dog. <laughs> uh, Dempsey? I All think right. he thinks that the dog belongs to you. Well, you've been taking care of it since, yeah, 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 yeah right? Yeah, been taking care of it. Uh, yeah, so... Your dad's a, a trainer, veterinarian, a, a dog walker, and you, you name it, man. A and barber. coach, and yeah, and barber. And, I and, cut and, that dog hair, boy. Oh yeah, you did. <laughs> I, I liked it because when I went to go, when I went to uh, to go see you in Tulare, I was going, oh, it looks like a lion, but look at his tail. I go, is he really like that? <laughs> and I was I was tripping out on him. He goes, hey, you like his haircut? And I go, I was tripping out on the tail part. Cause he was kind of shaved up a little uh, bit. Had that mane growing. Yeah. How, yeah. I, how's that mane growing now? Is it still? He still have the lion haircut or? Yeah, yeah. He has a tail at least. Uh, we cut a, We cut his uh, his hair a lot more just because it's it's still really hot. Yeah. But, um. This was the last haircut before winter, so we're gonna yeah. let him grow out again. But yeah, he has a he's a little lion mane and the the lion tail. So. Before we get back to that, what made you want to get a dog? And then where did the name? Dem I know where the name Dempsey come from, but what was the inspiration on, on to, to name him that? Because usually fighters today they'll say uh, Tyson, or they'll say you know one of the today's fighters. But Jack Dempsey, man, he had some hammers in his hands Definitely. for only what was he 180 pounds, if that? I mean, he was yeah, ex exactly like, knocking like, out uh, big heavyweights, legitimate heavyweights. Yeah, so I mean, Tyson's favorite fighter, uh, he says, is Jack Dempsey. Yeah. So I was like. You know, let's go to the let's go to the the root of the the root of the problem. Let's go to the the belly and the beast. You yeah. know, and that was Jack Dempsey. I just watched a couple of documentaries on him. I was looking at his style, I was looking at the way he fought, just because of how ferocious he was. You know, and uh, then COVID hit, and when COVID hit, uh, I was like, I had read a, a couple of books on on when to raise dogs, just mm -hmm. because I really wanted to be there and I really wanted to have a nice dog. And so I, I, I read that was like the first six months. If you have the first six months with the dog, then that's going to be the, the most crucial time to train a dog and to get him to uh, be good with other people and just to be an all around good dog. And COVID hit and they said everything's canceled for at least six months. I was like, this is my time. <laughs> this is my opportunity yeah. to be able to do it and, and yeah. train him. And so I started going online. I started looking through ads and uh, I found one dog. Um, and it was kind of funny because he had already had that pre name. He hadn't been born yet, but he had already had that little name, and it was uh, Tokyo. Oh, wow. And I was like, ah, Golden Retriever, Tokyo. I was like, ah, this, this is my dog right here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I want this dog. And so we um, we go to the uh, to the breeder finally. And when we got there, there was only like five or six dogs left out of the nine because like, a couple of them were taken. And then there was one with a green collar, and green's my favorite color. I was like, which one's this one? And he goes, oh, that was Tokyo. I was like, ah, right, it's, it's definitely. It was a wrap. Done yeah, deal. It was, it was done. And I took him back, and luckily I had the, the books with me, training for those six months. And, uh, and then my parents kind of took over a little bit, too. So yeah, I guess it's a family dog. <laughs> and, and, you know, I always see those, like, videos and stuff. You know, the dog's there at the airport, misses the owner. How was that welcoming? Oh, man. Well, I have a video of it, too. I'll show oh, you. Do I'll, you? I'll send you the video. I'll, I'll give okay. that to you. But, yeah, it was amazing. The dog just just run at me and then I, I sat down with them and he just he just he wouldn't stop you know he crawled because he reads me. our feelings as human beings uh -huh. animals do yeah and that was amazing man he made my he made my night you know and good so, for you man and then uh i still take him play fetch every day now and they you know inseparable have you shown him the, the silver medal yeah he, he does he's not too phased by it honestly <laughs> he's like, he ain't tripping off yeah he, he like food? yeah he likes to treat yeah better. yeah <laughs> where's my food exactly <laughs> now this next one pop you know this guy this is Mr. Lee Samuels from Top Rank Boxing Hall of Famer. He said, this is to you, Richard should be very proud and very, uh, of a very strong showing at the Olympics. Boxing can be heartbreaking the way, fighters, the way fights are scored. 
It happens in the professional and professional boxing as well. We tell our fighters to accept it and move on. We still think to this day, Oscar De La Hoya beat Felix Trinidad. He didn't get the decision, but we know in our hearts deep down that he won the fight. It's heartbreaking, but there's always an opportunity to do your best and get your hand raised. Don't be discouraged. Keep moving forward. I see a future world champion in you. And we're talking about a guy who rubbed shoulders with Muhammad Ali. I mean, they were, Muhammad Ali was with um, Lee Samuels and Bob Arum right, right from the gate. So hearing that, and I'm going to let Dad uh, comment as well, but hearing the, these strong words, how does that make you feel, man? I mean, I, I know I keep saying that, but it, it's just, I told you Dad a long time ago before you left, your, your whole life's about to change. Yeah, no, and honestly, uh, I was coming back, um, and like a lot of, a lot of crazy, I, I spoke with the Vander Holyfield over the phone, um, you know, Mike Tyson hit me up. Oscar De La Hoya DM'd me. We'll talk about the Mike Tyson hitting you up because yeah. I want to talk about that too. Uh, and and a bunch of people were just were just calling me and hitting me up. And when I get home, and we're driving back and uh, and we're driving back in style, man. Someone gave us like a, a, one of those Mercedes big old bus type things. Oh and, yeah. And we were able yeah. to drive back from that. And everyone's asking to take pictures and stuff. And I sat down. I look across and I see my dad. I see my mom. I see my sister. And I said to them, I was like things are about to change, you know, and things, things are really starting to change. And they're like, Oh yeah, no, things have already have changed. You know, like the, we, I went back to town, I'm walking around town now. So I, I went to Panda Express, you know, I got some teriyaki yeah. chicken and white rice. I heard some, that. Someone paid for my Shout meal. out for Panda <laughs> Express. They're not our sponsors, <laughs> but if you want to get on the Richard Torres train, uh, sponsorship is available. I don't know about wearing them on the trunks, but we will endorse it. And only on the fighter's voice, the only choice that matters, my man. But someone paid for my meal. There you go. And I, I was like awestruck that someone in my own town would pay for my meal like that. You know, uh -huh. I just found out recently that I'm I'm getting on a mural. Um, there's a, there's a mural in my town, and it has Bob Mathias and Simonis, and they're they're both Olympians. They're both Olympic champions, and then they said, Richard, you you brought this town together, and we're gonna give you a mural, and so I'm gonna be right next to them. You know, they're gonna have the gold, they're gonna have the silver. I'm gonna be on that, and I just think that's amazing. You know, I'm like. You know things have been set in stone now, and the things will mm -hmm. be set in stone. And it's, 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 a, it's more than a dream come true. You know, I didn't even dream that that was gonna happen. You know, and to be able to to sit here and have and have legends be able to talk about me or even know my name, yeah, it's it, it's insane. You know, and uh, just to talk on the 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 loss, man, is like I finally figured it out, and I firmly believe that this is one of the the saddest moments of my life. And the only reason I believe it was one of the saddest moments of my life is because I was riding so high to begin with. You know, I was in the Olympic finals, and I think that emotion is that change of emo is that change of feeling. That's when you're actually feeling something. So if you're super happy but you stay super happy, you kind of lose that happiness. But I was super happy and super stoked, and then I lost. So I went from a very high down to real low, and that's why I felt so much pain. You know, is because I had that 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 drop of of emotional of of feeling. You know. And so that's why I was crying so much. That's why I was I was so hurt. That's why I really feel like I let everybody down is because I let it was it was such a let down to me too. And so I mean, I I'm I'm very proud of the medal I had. I'm very proud of the medal I won. And it but I really did feel like that was one of the worst times of my life, you know? And so that's why I had all those tears. That's why I had all those emotions. Something I worked towards my entire life and to fall short like that it, it it's tough. It's really tough, you know. But I mean, I'm thankful for how I was able to perform. I'm thankful for what I was able to do. And you know, moving forward, it does give me a little more confidence. Dad, hearing those words and and, and leading up uh, what what uh, Lee Samuel says, and then hearing the words um, from your son and how he adapted and how he is moving forward now. How does that make you feel as a father and, and also a, a father and getting a compliment such as the one you did from a Hall of Famer? Yeah. You know, it's what kind of, you know, you, it, you, those are things you dream about. You know, hey, I'm going to be right up there with those guys and stuff. You know, uh, more, not, more like Kenny the fame now is, hey, I trained an Olympian. You know, all that Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Uh, you know, so that validates that and stuff. But it's wonderful. So, yeah, I, I know the feeling. You know, I you know, I remember losing and stuff and not at that level, but losing and stuff. But it's that big drop in emotion that you feel, you know, I, I let people down. I lost in the 84 Olympic trials. You know, I got dropped. Got stopped. Wow, I didn't want to come home, and you know, and I can I can relate to him, so I know where to where to go with it. You know, I don't 
push on anything. We just kind of let it settle and we, we talk about it after that. So, you know, a couple of things as far as all the excitement in town and stuff. So I'm going to give a shout out. If you guys ever get on Facebook, or many do, get on Facebook. There's a petition going around and they're talking about naming the next stadium. It's hilarious. The Richard Torres Stadium at Mission Elk High School. That's his alma mater. That'd be awesome. Uh, you know, the Hispanic and Tulare stuff, we, you know, that'd be great to have a stadium named after my boy here. You know, all the things, the accolades stuff, it, it, you know, it's, it's, you know, frosting on the cake. Um, he, his losses, he's used to motivate him. I remember talking to him after the loss to the Cuban in Peru. You know, a couple of the, the judges were sent home for just terrible, uh, ref, you know, judging. You know, I think the ref was sent home. You know, people were, were penalized and sent out of the place. And one of the officials came to my boy and says, hey, this is what happened. You should have won, probably. You know, or you should have won. And uh, he told me that. And I told him, hey, Rich, look it. They know you should have won. You know? yeah. He says, Pop, it doesn't matter. I'm not in the book. I, I'm i not in the book. It's four, four years. It doesn't matter. I lost. That's what he's going to say. He's not going to say Richard Torres should have won. He says Richard Torres lost. Yeah. And he used that to drive himself. Use that to push to the next level, and there is. I, I'm gonna say this, and uh, I'm not gonna sit back and not say because I'm, I'm to not offend people. It takes a lot of balls actually to take an interview and for you to be here after such a loss as such. I reached out to people who have took their first loss, and I haven't even heard back from them. Professionals took their first loss, and they didn't even come in front of a media camera. It's been over a year. You know who I'm talking about. <clears throat> yep. And for you at your young age to just, of course, the sting is still there, but now the sting is, is motivating you for the new chapter. And for you to take this interview and for you to embrace uh, exactly where you're at, it takes a lot of guts, man. I mean, people could say guts, but we'll, you know, me and your dad, we know deep down it takes a lot of balls, man, to, 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 to make that move and, and present yourself as such. So I, I wanted to say that. Thank you. I know it doesn't take the sting away, but you, you know what? Um, and I'm not BSing. You need to have that little sting because that's fuel, brother. That is fuel because you don't want you're, you're not going to feel that sting again. You're going to make sure you don't feel that sting again. Now this is coming from. Uh, uh, check this out. Vice President of Combat of Combate Global, Mike Inframowitz. He said, "Ask him first of all. Congratulate him on the the silver medal. <clears throat> Ask him what does he think of Anderson Silva boxing Tito Ortiz September 11th." <laughs> I mean, it's a. F I'd watch it. I'd watch it. You know, <laughs> there you I, go. I would, uh, there you go. I think it's two MMA fighters. Yeah, I think it's uh, two MMA fighters. But I think the fact that they're going into boxing, the fact that boxing is getting a lot more uh, accreditation, I guess, from a lot of yeah. different people. I, I do think it's bringing back the sport in a way. You know, I, I it may not be the way that uh, that the hardcore boxing fans like too much. Yeah. But it definitely is putting boxing on a platform again, you know. And uh, I know we've been, I know the boxing fans have stayed with the boxing platform. But I, I, I hear people that have never heard of boxing before talk to me about, oh, what about this TikToker versus YouTuber? But at least boxing's still in that equation, you know. So I do think, I don't know. I, I, I want to watch it. I'll, I'd watch it. And I'm, I'm, I'm for it. Okay, Mike, I know you're listening. I know you're probably going to send a pair of tickets, but send three, man. I mean, we'll, <laughs> we'll sit ringside and watch that thing together because he can make that happen. What's your thoughts on, on, on this, uh, Dad? You know what? It, it's good for the sport. Uh, you know, I don't watch very much MMA. In fact, I don't watch it. I know some invited to somebody's house for a few, you know, nachos or something. But, yeah. Uh, you know, it, best luck to both the guys. I got no opinion one way or the other. Just knowing that you're not just hitting the boxing community, you're also hitting the MMA community because nobody's blind. Everybody tuned in and watched that fight. The ratings were, were, were off the chain. I thought they should have been on primetime TV, to be honest with you, because uh, those days, remember those days? Oh, yeah. oh, we didn't miss it at all, period. But knowing that it's just not the boxing community that, that's looking at you. Wait till Wheaties and, and GQ Magazine hits you up and, 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 these, and I'm sure they already have these, these talk shows. And wait till you... And the rest of the team go and shake hands to the president, man, because we're waiting for the whole Olympics to settle. I, I want to know how that feeling is like. That's going to be on the next show. Definitely. This is from Jamal Herring, WBO junior lightweight champion of the world. Tell him I said congratulations. I wish him nothing but the best success in his future. Man, that's, a, that's another Olympian in captain. Man, that's, that's, it's awesome to hear, you know, and I, I see these guys in the uh, 
couple of them been on on like FaceTimes and Zooms with the team, you know. But to be able to, I, I can't even get to all of them. They're they're right. it, the phone is, uh, you know. <laughs> but to be able to 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 have them talk to me too, because you know sometimes they talk to the team, and when they yes. talk to the team, they yes. don't talk to it. Like it, it feels like okay, they're they're here for Team USA. But to have them be able to say, nah, this is Richard Torres we're talking about here, and I'm yeah. I'm thankful to be able to talk to or or congratulate Richard Torres. It's it's amazing, you know. And so I'm just I'm just thankful for it. <laughs> Dad, your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, it's it feels good because the people who are coming in, those champs who've been through the grind, they know what it takes and stuff. You know, being a world champion is awesome. That is great and everything, and that's what we hope to be one day in the professional and stuff. But these guys know the how rough it is to get to that, yes. get to the Olympics. They know how rough it is to get to a medal round. They know how rough it is. Not everybody medals. No, I mean not everybody goes to the Olympics. You exactly. Know? Uh, styles make different, you know, different styles. You need right combination, right things to happen for you to get into that spot. But you know, one misstep, because for him to get to Olympics, until that last uh, loss in the United States, he hasn't lost. He hasn't lost. To get to that spot where he was, he has been beaten since Jolov. A couple of years, okay. Undefeated, so you know that that's his versus tenacity and his strength to keep going and stuff. But it's very difficult to be a top ranked amateur because it's such a meat grinder. Exactly. I'm gonna read this one, and then I'm not, I'm not even be able to get to the rest. Of them. I'll, I'll send them to you, and then you can maybe hit them up on on Twitter, or Instagram. This is um, from Arnold Barboza, who's ranked number uh, three by the WBO, number five by the WBC, twenty five and 0, 10 knockouts. Mm-hmm. Um, don't sleep on this guy, 140 pounds. He's fighting this Saturday on ESPN Top Rank Boxing. He said, tell him, I, I'm going to keep it real. Tell him I said, good shit, man. <laughs> keep it going and get that strap in the pros. Oh, so he you, kept man. it 100, man. I mean, yep, I, I can say good stuff, but that's not what the man said. <laughs> nah, I mean, yeah, and, you know, I, I see these guys and I see what, what they're doing now and I want to be there one day again. And to be able to say I was in their position or I'm – I've I've done what a lot of them did already, and I'm on the right track. Is is amazing, you know. So I just want to be able to to follow what they do and follow in their footsteps. There you are. I just started thinking right now when you started talking about how when you were picking out your dog, it said Tokyo, and there was a lot of signs there. I'd asked your dad earlier <clears throat> about um, coming to a high school in Madeira, a, a new high school in Madeira, because you got north and you got south, and they're already hitting me up. They they think I walk around with everybody's Rolodex, and then I'm always constantly on the phone with somebody. It, no, they don't. They think that I'm rolling, and, and no, the reality is, uh, we know the behind the scenes thing. It hasn't, uh, it's not there yet, okay? And when it does, I'm I'm still 100. I'm still the same. But I started thinking about it, and guess what that high school's called? It's called Matilda Torres High School. There you go. And my buddy Jason Alexander is head of security over there. So big plug in for Jason. I said, you know what, Jason? Um, I know he's going to have a, a busy schedule, but when it all settles, I'm sure him and his father would love to have him go speak to the high school kids, give, give a positive speech. Uh, because you're still a kid yourself, my man. I mean, you, you are. You could identify with what they're going through. And I can't wait to hear the story of I went running before school. After school, this is what I did. And I don't want to take those words out of your mouth, but just knowing they want you to come to that high school. I mean, to me, that that's, I, I, I see all these other compliments in the professional level, but, but knowing, Hey, I want this guy to talk because he's going to dictate and help these kids future by what comes out of his mouth, not just his two hands. How does that make you feel? How does that grab you? I mean, I think that's just a, a compliment to my parents in a way. You know, it's it's yeah. something that they didn't just teach me to box. You know, my, my dad and my mom. And I will say this. Okay, I'm glad you said that. And dad's just one half of the pedigree. <laughs> I, I, mom's an athlete. Oh, definitely. My God. You, see, you didn't have a chance, Rich. You got it all. <laughs> yeah, my mom. My mom's a marathon runner. My there you go. A, I think she's going on her fourth now. She's training for maybe her fourth marathon. Uh, my sister ran a marathon. My sister played two sports in college. She was a water polo and soccer player in college. You know, it's like, yeah, we're a family of athletes, man. So it's, it's, it was, uh, that's why I thought it was normal. You know, that's why I thought yes. it was normal because yes. everyone was doing something crazy in the sports. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think to be able to get called to high schools and, and speak on my behalf on what I did, not only in the sport, but in my academics, you know, being able to talk about how I was chess club president or Val Victorian or uh, on the robotics team, you know, while I was playing three sports and then also going to, uh, to boxing. That's remarkable. It, I mean, it's... 
That's almost impossible. <laughs> it was it was definitely tough. And I mean, the biggest thing I tell everybody is like, you really that way when people say you could choose like one of three things is like you could choose your sports, academics, or your social life. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of true in a way. You know, I gave up a lot of things. I sacrificed a lot of things, and you just gotta find what you want to be able to sacrifice for. And that was a big question uh, that I was looking at. You know, because I, I thought boxing was normal. I thought boxing yeah. was just something you did. So I was always searching for what do I love in life, and it was right in front of me the entire time. Uh, but I, I think what I would tell buddy right now is, is you know, don't try to find something you love. Just try to find something you like, and just start doing it because it it likes turning to loves real quick. Absolutely. And uh, and as long as you have a little base and you stay consistent with it, it, it makes all the difference. And I mean, I'd, I'd love to go out and talk to any high school. You know, I am very busy right now. I thought it was gonna be a little bit of a break time, but it's 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 right back to the grind, not in a boxing way, but in a media way. And then I love it. Uh, but I'm more than happy to talk to anybody that's willing to listen. Dad? That's great. I uh, appreciate the, the compliment and stuff. But, um, you know, I, I like to hear him talk. I like to hear. Uh, it's kind of like money in the bank, you know, that's kind of yeah. just paying me back and stuff. Yeah. Hey, that was a good move. That was a good, good thing. So, so uh, he does a great job. You know, look at him. He's a great kid. I mean, I want people to know that, that if you want to see an exciting fight, you want to hear an exciting story if you want to get us uh, get a smile on your face follow him on YouTube he's got a YouTube channel he it was the journey and if you guys haven't seen the journey you know he starts in a couple months before the Olympics and he talks about training camp I'm, I'm this I'm that I got to go do this and, and he get behind the scenes what he's eating what is happening who are people talking to him how is he feeling things that you know some great things and stuff in there so he had a YouTube channel it's, you know Richard Torres and he's got a you know uh, his Instagram, you know, he'll put up things about his dog, you know, the real, Ri the Richard Torres, his Instagram. And you got two of them actually. Yeah, well, it's it's the Richard Torres is that that's my Instagram. I had one. I started uh, using the one that has the blue dot. I didn't mean to cut you off, you Dad. Know, that's oh, good. really? Yeah. Oh no, I I, I use I, them both though. I still use them okay, both now. Yeah, I have the uh, the the verified one is okay. is uh, the Richard Torres. I have one, an old one. That was Richard Torres, like two one two or something like that. Okay. But that one, uh, I actually got kicked out of the second time I went to Russia because they thought I was trying to hack my account to get into oh, it. Oh gosh. And so I never got back into it. So my old okay. friends will, sh will send me some old photos and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I, I I don't I don't even have access to that myself because it was a. Uh, I gotta make sure I have the right one. I'm gonna show you my phone later on okay, out after definitely. the show. Yeah. It's funny because <laughs> he he told me because he kind of got we got the word a little before everybody else did. Everything wasn't 100%. The coaches don't say nothing because we don't know 100%. But it looks like my year in Olympics. He calls me on the phone one night. He says, Pops, Pops. I go, what? He goes, we made it. We made it. We made it to the Olympics. We got All right. Yay. Yeah, we're talking. Man. So, yeah, yeah. Was it a Wednesday when it was official? I, when you got the letter? I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember. Official. I could look at my text messages uh, and we'll <laughs> we'll see. But, you know, it was even maybe a little before that. Yeah. But, but the thing is, and he was happy and excited. Then all of a sudden he's, he goes, Hey, I'm I'm verified. I'm verified. I'm like, oh, that's what's I'm, up, I'm though. I'm asking my daughter, what the hell's that? Mean? <laughs> <laughs> so you got almost excited as being verified and going to the Olympics. So. Yeah, I mean, the the Olympics is always like a like a yes, no, yes, no. It was yeah. always like that, yeah. you know. And like it got canceled three times. So when I got told that, oh, you're gonna be Olympian, I was like, yeah, yeah, all right, all right maybe, you know. And was, yeah. I was like, hey, pops, it's not, and they would say 99.9 percent .9 sure, but we're not 100 yeah. percent sure, and we don't know if the Olympics are gonna go. So I. Have, Possibly we might do it, you know, it's almost like that. But uh, when I saw a blue check, and it, it was right there, you know, I didn't yeah. have to say there was no 99.9 percent. .9%. Like, I hey, that was check. a lot of water. Oh, uh, man. pops, that was a lot of pops is gonna be verified now because yeah. <laughs> when you can't respond to all your mail, they're gonna hit up pops. Oh, yeah. no, definitely. Yeah. No, no. But, I'm, I'm old school, I'm Facebook, and I'm an old guy. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, what, what was before Facebook? What was it? Uh, MySpace. MySpace. Uh -huh. You still got your account? I've uh, never had MySpace. I have MySpace. I had one. Yeah. Oh and yeah. You get to, you well, get bring it back. back. Yeah, yeah. You get <laughs> your uh, when you would open up the profile of anybody yeah. else, you even play music like the music. Oh was wow. Playing. It was, yeah, that was a cool app. Okay. Well, well, that, well, that's yeah, good. Yeah, my yeah. Yeah. The computer. <laughs> we had those those little ones. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. fun. You find out things all the time here. Yeah. You, you, you do. You do. You know, I was thinking. I was. I was uh, thinking to myself. Um, I gotta have something, right? So I'm thinking everybody's gonna ask him for a glove to sign. So what I did is I brought two baseballs uh -huh. that later on you, you can write one that says to Richie, which I'm gonna put in Richie's room, and uh, uh, my godson, Ryan, my, my buddy, uh, Bill, 
um, his um, his son. So when you when you sign him, you can write to uh, to Ryan because I know a lot of fighters they won't sign gloves they they won't. But when when they ask, hey, can you write to somebody? Then they'll say, okay, he's not going to sell it on eBay. He's not going to try to get the highest bidder and. And to have a, a boxer sign a glove, it's like a lot of them, I mean, I, I don't want to name fighters, but they, they won't sign them because they know they put them on the market and they and they sell them. So I always like give a baseball. And, it, and it's rare that I, I reach out because I was always told myself, well, I see them as friends, but they're for other people who would appreciate. They don't get the luxury of sitting in front of you. They don't get the luxury of, of interviewing them or, or talking to them. It's just to present that to them, I, I like to look at their uh, their face. And, and Richie has his little collection, too, and, and little Ryan as well. So we'll talk about that after the show. Um, we talked about Mike Tyson. You're, you're a couple. You're a phone call away. Just remember the Fighter's Voice uh, podcast, too. So when you do go to the ranch, but I can't wait to see that interview happen because it is going to happen. And and uh, I'm looking forward to that, man, what advice he offers you or how you go back and forth and, uh, you know. You may have to take one of those things that you put over your, <laughs> uh, you know, just try not to yeah, inhale, don't do you know, <laughs> you know, you're down, me not answer some questions from the star, but later on as the show goes, he said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you everything, you know, I said, hey, is there anything to eat around here? Yeah, no, <laughs> hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it one day, but just to, just to speak on your behalf again, it's like, it wasn't, and it's not just like today, like you didn't just hit us up, you know, yeah. right after we were Olympic medalists, you know, you didn't do that. I mean, first time we talked, well, I was like 16, maybe. Like, yeah. I mean, it's been, you've been with us, like, for almost every step of, of, like, the big amateur division ever since, I think, uh, Golden Gloves, right? Was it Golden Gloves? Yeah, before then. It was even before Golden Gloves, yeah. like, and so, I just want to say thank you, you know, thank you for, like, staying with us, you know, it's, it's been, there's, there was a couple of times, like, growing up where it, I'd feel like no one was there, you know, no one was, yeah. like, asking anything, and it was just me and my dad. And like, what were we even doing this for? You know, I was like, man, it's like, it's just tough. Like, yeah, we're doing it because we love the sport, but it's like, there's no recognition at all, you know? And so to be able to have someone, you know, care about what you're doing and to, to be able to, you know, to tell everybody what you're doing yeah. is, is and have a platform to do so, it's, it was amazing. So I just want to say thank you. Uh, you're welcome. And, and Rich, I will, I will say this, and, and your father knows, to ask someone to do something with, with no expectancy back, that's when you know it's genuine. That's when you know it's real. That's when you know it's true, man. And uh, I remember I called you with maybe two hours before. I said, hey, this continuation, um, they're, they're, they're speakers. The, the guy called me and said, hey, Richard, can you pull a rabbit out of your hat, man? I mean, I, I want someone to talk uh, uh, um, to these, to these uh, young um, students. I said, sure, when, when? When is it? It's today. I said, oh, my God, are you serious? And your dad made the trip all the way from Tulare within like a two hour notice, maybe three hours and showed up. When you walked through that door, they were like, what the heck? And I didn't say, okay, yeah, I called them. I know, no, because it, it wasn't about me. It was about the, the rest of the students and the fact that we were able to fill that void. Do you remember they had that little dinner there and yep, so forth? Uh, Coach Pete was there and uh, Rick was there and uh, a few other people were there. Some MMA guys were there. Some other. that food. Oh, oh, that food was bomb. <laughs> yeah, I handed out some of that, too. That oh, really yeah. No, that food was bomb. It was very, it was catered. And actually, I'll give a shout-out to Alonzo Morales about Millions. I, I know he he helped with the donation yeah. to that food there. And that was, uh, yeah. When things happen like that, and it's 100% uh, with, with uh, passion in your heart, they always seem to work out. I mean, you could plan things, and they never work out because everybody has a hidden agenda or their heart's really maybe not uh, behind it or you got too many quarterbacks but that one, it worked out yeah. and, and they, they couldn't thank me enough. And I just said, Hey, I, I just made some phone calls. Thank them. They're, I'm just, I'm just a regular person, man, that just has a heart and, and a passion for it. And, uh, you know, Ali setback said this, he goes, Richard, you do what you love. You'll never work a day in your life. Mm -hmm. Correct. And, um, speaking of Ali setback, he's, he's one of the guys I, I think is going to make a, a call or something to get you invited out there to that, that Tyson ranch. <clears throat> So that's some good things coming up. We were hoping that Tyson calls could get some sparring, but not. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There, there you go. That would be good. I, and I was going to ask you that too. You know, I had all these things, you know, who would you like to share the ring with and stuff? But when the momentum's going, I, I'm going to let it go. Now, I'm going to ask this question and then I'm going to back off. Dad, you waited for the uh, appointed time. You, you waited for everything to lay out. There's offers on the table. Any hint to where you're leaning towards, what you want to do, or better yet, what would you like for your son? Because these offers are coming, and, and, and they are. And, and I, I may be 
I'm not one of those to say, okay, this guy, when they ask me a question, I may kind of twist a little bit because I'm not going to come on. You need to ask that question mm -hmm. and don't, you know, use our friendship to get, but, but it hasn't been the case. Uh, I do like Mikey's though. He just freaking <laughs> went for it. He didn't even do no filling out process or, or nothing. And I, and I love that because in life, if you want something, you go for it. Just right. like you did in that ring, anything dad, because that has been the most question asked of me. I'm not, I didn't bring you here to pressure you or any of this. Give us something just to chew on. Or at least tell us what you would like for your son. You know what? With life's a plan. Yes. You, know, you don't get any place in life without a plan, direction, a place to go. It's always been a plan to get to the Olympics. That was a plan set out for a long time. Mm -hmm. you know, we had some setbacks. We had some, some switchbacks, things like that. But we got there. The plan has always been for my son to be successful enough to be one day sitting on the beach, beach somewhere, drinking a margarita or whatever he likes, and say, Pops did me right. Okay? We want a long-term goal. We want we want we want uh, a performance-based program in professional ranks, just like was the amateurs. That if he busts his hump, if he does well, he gets rewarded. Yeah. He's the one taking the, the punches. He's asked me a couple of times, you know, hey, pops, what's going to take you to, to retire? Or anything? You know, how much money would be? I I, I, I kind of shy away from that because it's not about me. But the thing is, just let me be along with the ride yeah. because it's going to be a ride, yeah. and I want to be a part and enjoy it. I know what that is. The goal has always been send me out a plan for long-term success that allows him to retire with money in the bank, money in his pocket, and, and a way of life that he, that he can pass on to his kids and his grandkids. You know, we don't want to we don't want to stay in the ring too long. Yeah. You know, uh, if if it's always been a good of all my boxers, my gym, professional amateurs. If I come to you and I tell you, it's enough. Okay, you gotta listen to me. I told all my fighters, I said, I'll turn you pro and I'll work with you and stuff. Mm -hmm. But you gotta remember, our agreement is when I say it's enough, it's enough. That's it. Okay, I don't wanna, you know, I had some guys, you know, oh, I, I can have one more fight. Okay, not with me though. Okay, yeah. Good. I don't wanna be responsible for that. I know one of my fighters, a good fighter, James Kendall, the preacher and stuff, out of Tulare and stuff. Man had a knockout punch, a great punch and stuff. Got in the fight one time as far as the, at the palace, when I used to have the fights out there. Yeah, I had a hell of a fight. Had a great fight. One that the belt they had up for grabs that night, and he came back to the gym and he was dizzy. Uh, he didn't look right. So Jim, what happened? He goes, Coach, I've been kind of dizzy the last couple of days. So, ah, oh, hell, you know. So okay, he just got him set up with the doctor. Went and did a uh, MRI and whole bit. He had, still had a little brain bleed. I said, Hey, we're done, wow. James. We're done. Yeah. You know, we're done. If it's this long, no we're fight, risk. we're done. He went a little depression, so, but you know, I don't want that to happen to my son. As far as James is good now. James is a great guy. He has lovely grandkids now having a lot of time of life he has that belt though he has the memories and you know i want my boy to be in that position where he didn't take the shots like that because we don't want we want life is life after boxing yes okay and i want him to be successful and someone with a good plan and she can show me on paper a b c and d this is how you get from a to d i like that i like that you dad still didn't tell Anybody, where you guys are going and what you're leaning, but but he's letting everybody know exactly what he wants, and and, and I'll take that. When Dad's ready, that'll be a whole t totally different conversation. I, I have a, a respectful relationship with your father, and I, I want to keep it as such. Yeah, exactly, and like, kind of to to I don't know what he said is uh is like we we are talking to people, but we are also keeping our options open. You know, like we mm -hmm. are. I mean, and a lot of people are coming, a lot of people are talking, um, a lot of people are trying to say that like maybe we signed with someone but we we haven't signed with anybody, signed yet. anybody yet and so like we're we're uh, all offers are welcome yeah, all offers offers are welcome. Are, we'll, we'll talk to everybody mm -hmm. you know you can bring you bring your game plan let us sit down and, and digest it hey could be the one we, we we pick ladies and gentlemen you heard it first only on the fighter's voice all options are open let's see some guarantees on paper let's see some numbers let's see some a time frame some a plan a b c and d only on the fighter's voice because I didn't think all options were open because I know people that know people that know people that know people that know people, but not as much as the people you guys know. <laughs> but uh, I'm just having fun with the show. I, I will say this, though, and um, and then I'm going to shy away from it. I would always say team so-and-so, team so-and-so, team so-and-so, team so-and-so. In being media, when I do that, because I broke a rule, I became friends with, with, with fighters. 
And uh, it, it, I mean, fighters are the nicest people in the world. My gosh, they're not the monsters in the beast that everybody thinks that they are in the ring. Outside of the ring, man, these guys are the the gentle giants, the the, the kindest people that you would meet in your life. And I broke a couple rules. I got you know real close to a lot of fighters, and I was always oh team this, team this, team this, team this. But I learned a valuable lesson uh, less than a year ago. I may have proclaimed team this, but team this didn't proclaim me a team. And I said I would never do that again. I said that. And uh, Mateo, remember I said that I would never do that again? I do. I was there when you said it. Yeah, okay, we're not going to say why. But I am still Team Torres. Because I feel it's just more, before any championship, before any gold medal, silver medal, Olympics, or whatever, I've always said that I was going to stay true to where, where I feel. And, uh, and I'll say it on the air. And, and I said it, which means I own it. Uh, I'm responsible for it. And... It's not going to change. No, definitely. And not just could not just because you're here. Yeah. I, I I truly mean that. Yeah, and I, and I reciprocate that. I mean, and anytime you want that interview, anytime you want that, I mean, you have it. You 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 want the first dibs, man. I mean, every time, uh, you do want something. I mean, I'm 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 there for it. You know, because I mean, you, you're the ones that gave us a, like one of our first shout outs. So I just want to say thank you to that. And Absolutely. Because of that, you know, we're we're gonna be there for you too. I appreciate that. And and the way I see it is, I want you to take every opportunity that you can, because I know. Why am I, that interview's already here. I want him, when I say him, that's you, to go get everything that he can, because it's already here. I'm not gonna stand in the way of that, because mm -hmm. that helps you, the growth, and now worldwide. Once the world sees you, there's no going back to it. There's no reason to go back to it. Uh, you know, once you wanna uh, make that LeBron James decision, maybe we'll make it right here. You know, I'm gonna take my, uh, you know, my, my skill set to, what do you say, to Miami? Or he says yeah, to that right. effect. So when you're ready to say, hey, we're gonna go and, sign with this person or we're going to go this direction or that direction. Hey, maybe, uh, you know, we, uh, I'll be a part of that or I'll watch it or something, you know, yeah. just to know. Okay. And uh, dad, and dad has his trust because dad did open up to me a lot of times and I'm thinking, okay, man, this man, he trusts me. So I'm going to, I'm going to be good by it. And people would hit me up. I go, I don't know, bro. Oh, bro. I said, brother, I, I don't know. Oh, well, what's the name already knows. And I, well, I, I don't, but, it's about, um, you know, I always describe it this way. You know, like when you, though, they sell those shirts, like three for $10, mm -hmm. when they get over on you, you wash it and it shrinks. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be that person. I want to sell the shirt where they go, oh man, oh, it still feels good. Right. So not the relationship where you get this guy and then you burn him, then you got to hide from him. If I sell a car, I want to, hey, how's the car running? Not avoid you, you understand? Mm -hmm. So I'm about that with myself, my name, and, and, the, and the whole podcast, man. It, you know, I'm not here to toot my own horn or, or in the above, but it is what it is. And besides, man, even my son, when you have the name Richard, there's something special about that name. Hey, it's a remarkable man. name, and, and it just, it, we're, we were named that to touch people. I truly believe that. And uh, yeah, enough said. Anything you want to leave us with, Dad, because I'm going to have Richard take us home, Junior. You know what? I just, once again, I can't stress that enough. I always thought, the Olympic boxing, I always thought boxing, heavyweight boxing, a scene was lacking something. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to take it back to the old hey days when you look at the guy up there and says, Hey, you see that guy, you cheer your daughter, you see that guy, I want you to marry the heavyweight champion of the world. You know, there for a while, nobody wanted to marry the heavyweight champion of the world. You know, but this kid right here, yes. himself, he's a whole package, he's got you know, he's the kind of kid that you're, you're you want your daughter to bring home. Yeah, he wanted to hang out and have dinner with them. He's just down earth kid and stuff that I like to hang out with him. He's a friend of mine, and uh, you guys jump on board, man. You're gonna miss the train because the real, uh, the real Richard, the Richard Torres on uh, Instagram and follow him wrong, man. It helps us, and we'll we'll give you the time of your life. There you go. What about you, Junior? The, the, the mic is yours, man. I mean, uh, the world's gonna listen because I'm gonna tag everybody like I did today. Yeah, you know, I just want to say thank you to my community. You know, thank you to everybody that's been supporting me. You know, I, I, I came home and I see banners everywhere. I see people talking to me. I, I went to Walmart today. I had five people take pictures of me. I went to that Panda Express. I had like five people take pictures of me. You know, people are really caring and uh, interested in what we're doing. And I just want to say thank you for the support. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to make everybody proud. I'm trying to I'm trying to make Hawaii proud. I'm trying to make California proud. I'm trying to make the USA proud, you know. We're not just fighting for uh, one person anymore. We're fighting for an entire country. And uh, I just want to say, you know, I, I gave my all, and uh, and I'll, I'll do that every time. Hey, don't forget your, you know, Guerras. Where are you? Oh, um, all right. 
I've been working on my Spanish. So, uh, all right, let me, all right there you go, man. All right, all right, so, You're going to put me to shame right now. Let me right, hear right, it. Mi, uh, mi cuerpo es mexicano. Mi sangre es mexicana. Y right. mi corazón es un campeón. So I'm I'm pretty sure I said it, and no, I'm gonna be working on this even That's more. That's good enough, man. All right, but my, I have the body of a I have the body of an American, the blood of a Mexican, and the heart of a champion. I like you know? that. And wow. uh, and you know, together that's a that's a, a winning combination. There we go. It, it is, it is, because that that medal is silver, but inside it's gold. There you go. Just always remember that, just like your dog, golden retriever, <laughs> my man. I will say this. I appreciate you, you taking the time coming on and, and, and your dad reaching out. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a part of that train. I, I, let me know when he's going to be on TV. Let me know when he's doing things so I can continue to watch and support. And people are going to hit me up later because there's nothing like the archives. Mm -hmm. And when you get people from day one and you, and you treat them the same from day two, three, four, and five, then they know that that you're you're worthy of sitting at the table with them, man. And I appreciate it, you both coming over all the way from Tulare. Yeah. You're actually the first guest in the new studio. And one other thing I forgot to say. Is Let's hear I it, said my man. Already, on the 21st in Tulare, they're going to have the motorcade. They're going to have a celebration celebrating Richard Torres and the, the, the medal. Okay? So we're awesome. Gonna have, we want everybody to come to the at the Bamatai Stadium at 7 o'clock. The motorcade starts in my boxing club at 630 and load up some people, some of his old schoolmates will be there. They'll have his Paul Verde, his old uh, elementary school. They'll have uh, Mission Oak High School on, with floats. They're gonna take him into the stadium. He's gonna speech, kind of some dignitaries there, but it's gonna be a Richard Torres day, baby. And you know what, and you can't say is, you know, thank you enough to the city to come aboard and representing him and, and, and celebrating with him. But if anybody has an opportunity, come check it out. It'll be in Tulare at six, seven o'clock at Bamathia Stadium. On the twenty-first. Well, we're gonna make sure we, we get a copy of that that flyer, or whatever, and we'll start uh, promoting, and pushing as well. Because um, I don't want anybody saying, "Well, I, I I didn't have a chance to meet him." I mean, hey, go there, not just meet him, but support him. And uh, you're the type of guy that no matter how many people get in line, you you're gonna touch every single one of them I'm instead sure. of going, "Oh, I gotta go." You're gonna say, "You know what, pops? I'll, I'll meet you at dinner later. I, I'm gonna." <laughs> you're just that type of person because when I envision you, I I, I see that happening. I, 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 I really do, man. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank everybody who tuned in. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Fighter's Voice. That's uh, www.youtube.com slash The Fighter's Voice. Every fighter has a voice, and so do you. And so does Richard Torres Jr. and Richard Torres Sr. And as always, it's a wrap. Thumbs up for Richie.